Welcome to the World Stroke Day Masterclass. I'm Sheila Martins, Campaign Committee Co-Chair of WSO. Uh, let's learn with the World Stroke Day Award winners in preparation to the World Stroke Day this year. So Virginia Pujol Leris from Flene, Argentina, uh, will talk about raising awareness of stroke and prevention using uh, Instagram. Virginia is a stroke neurologist and researcher at the Centro, Centro Integral de Neurologia Vascular Flene in Buenos Aires, Argentina. She earned a medical degree from the University of Buenos Aires. Subsequently, she completed her neurology residency in Hospital Ramos Mejia and did a fellowship in the stroke at Flene, Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, Virginia was recognized with different national and international awards, including Paul Dudley White Award of the International Stroke Conference and CF Award. She has authored 25 scientific papers in peer-reviewed journals and wrote chapters in several books of uh, the specialty. You can start, Virginia, thank you. Well, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I want to thank the World Stroke Organization this possibility to share with all of you our experience in the last year uh, Stroke World Day campaign that we call Stroke Day Instagram. So, what was the idea of our campaign? Last year, we decided to take our awareness campaign to the social networks. So we share on Flenny, that is my uh, hospital, uh, Instagram, several trivia about stroke. We decide to focus on young population where the impact of prevention campaigns can be greater in the long term. But I'm going to explain why we need the help of influencers in health issue uh, to multiply the reach of our campaign. But why social network? Well, in my city, Buenos Aires, and in my country, Argentina, every year we do several activities for the World Stroke Day. We prepare uh, talks to community inside and outside our clinics and hospital. We prepare uh, interviews for television, for radio, for newspaper, uh, a lot of activities in public places, uh, even some years ago, uh, we organized a very nice hike uh, work against stroke. It was so incredible activity that won a award from the World Stroke Organization and every year we repeat this activity uh, with more, more and more people and cities doing in my country. But uh, this year, or last year, we want to do something thinking in young population and this population don't participate widely in this kind of activities. Young people live online. They study online, they do shopping online, they met friends online, they uh, fell in love online, they do everything online. So if we want to uh, achieve this population, we must to go online. And social network gave us the possibility uh, to reach this population in an uh, effective, fast, and no expensive way. And that last, last point is very, very important because sometimes uh, when you don't have enough money in your center or in your country for this kind of activities, you feel that you can do something important, and I don't think so. And why we decide to use Instagram? Well, uh, nowadays, our Instagram account has more than twice the number of followers we had last year. At the moment of last uh, Stroke World Day, we had 11,000 followers. It's a great number, but it's not a very popular account. Uh, influencer Instagrammer have, uh, has much more number than that. Uh, but young people don't use uh, Facebook and our most popular uh, social network is Facebook, and we have a great uh, Twitter network uh, account, but uh, we use Twitter to communicate with medical and scientific community, not with not medical community. So young, young people use Instagram, so we must use Instagram. Because of we ho don't have a very huge number of followers, uh, we ask her to influencers in health issues. Using the, the story features of Instagram that appear up Instagram and 
uh, say, uh, 24 year, uh, hours, we invite the public to participate in different trivia games with simple questions about stroke. We also provide information about recent epidemiological data in Argentina and this paragraph with information about stroke risk factors, prevention and treatment. And to increase the participation, uh, we gave away two tickets to attend our annual uh, Solidarity Gala that took place two weeks after uh, the worst of day in the mythical Colón Theater in Buenos Aires. And the first uh, trivia game was a multiple choice question that uh, were uh, developed related to definition of stroke, stroke factors, recognition of symptoms, and need for rapid response. You can see here examples of how it uh, looked like. You have the, the question and then the possible answer. If you choose the correct one, it appears in green. And we were so happy that more than 90% of the people choose the correct option. The second trivia games were two or four questions that again were developed related to acute stroke treatment and need for rapid response in the emergency setting. And you have the question, the affirmation, and then you can choose if it were true or false, and then appear the correct option, the correct answer. And again, we were very, very, very happy because near or more than 90% choose correct option. And uh, like I said before, our account is, was not so popular. So we asked help to influencers in health issue. We designed a very attractive and short video and to several influence health issue to share on the occasion of the World Stroke Day. Uh, the video uh, had information about epidemiological data and uh, stroke risk factors. And uh, 13 influencers helped us. And this message was amplified by these influencers that in total had up than more than 1 million 200,000 followers. So, more than 1,000 people participate in both trivia games. The campaign was visited in our Instagram account more than 15,000 uh, times. Remember, it uh, was more times than uh, our own followers, so we were very, very happy. And these uh, 13 influencers with a total of 1,200,000 followers share uh, our straw uh, awareness campaign. In conclusion, our campaign contributes from a novel and innovative perspective, reaching a large number of persons in a short period of time. Remember, uh, uh, history in, in, in Instagram takes only 24 uh, hours one day, uh, raising stroke awareness during the World Stroke Day. And uh, this is the first time that the World Stroke Day campaign in Argentina achieved this degree of visibility. And well, thank you very much for your attention. This is my world team. And I always say that without a great team, you can do great things. And I have an incredible team. So I know we can do incredible things together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Virginia. This is great. Congratulations for the job. And we hope this year the World Show campaign can have the same success than last year campaign. So now I think we will call uh, Rita to talk. Alina? Rita first? Okay. Yes. Okay, so let's invite Hina, uh, Rita Meli Fonu to talk about leveraging World Stroke Day to build awareness on risk and prevention with the public and policy makers. Rita is a stroke nurse. Wait a minute. Rita is a stroke nurse turned social interpreter. Uh, she is the founder of Stroke Action and Stroke Support Organization. That is the outcome of her UK Department of Health, Mary's Sicol. Nursing Leadership Award Action Research Study, Developing Nurse Role in Evidence-Based Stroke Care. 
Gita won the World Stroke Day Award in 2015 and was last year named the leading social entrepreneur by Ashoka Foundation um, through, uh, because of her work. She influenced policy change in stroke care and is a member of NCD Technical Working Group, Federal Minister of Health in Nigeria. Gita is a member of the board of the directors of World Stroke Organization and engaging uh, key stakeholders to advance stroke research capacity within stroke support organizations. She is a, she is a member of OSCALE, Organized Stroke Care Across Income Levels, and who uh, is Stroke Development Group for a Package of Rehabilitation Intervention, Af African Stroke Organization, and International Stroke Rehabilitation and Recover Alliance. Rita, please, you can start. Thank you, Sheila, and thank you, everyone. Um, may I say a big thank you um, to the World Stroke Organization for enabling us to share our experiences um, of World Stroke Day campaign. So the title of my presentation is Power to Stop Stroke, and that is how we got started in Nigeria um, way back in 2012. So the context in Nigeria um, is that we will say rightfully that stroke is now an epidemic in Nigeria. And if we don't do anything about prevention and awareness, it is definitely going to be a pandemic. Now, the data we have as far back as 2008 by Professor Wahab um, and um, uh, Professor Wala is that 1.14 persons out of every 1,000 in Nigeria had a stroke. So if you do the uh, mathematics, we have over 200,000 people having a stroke every year in Nigeria. And what is even worse is that stroke is affecting um, young people in their most economically active lifespan and therefore leading to unemployment and poverty. And for me, it really hit home when members of my family started having a stroke. I was working in the UK at the time. So in 2012, we decided to do some strategic advocacy uh, for stroke care, stroke care in Nigeria, starting with awareness and prevention. And when I did a search on the internet, there was no stroke support organization in Nigeria at the time, and the Federal Minister of Health was not uh, doing, celebrating the World Stroke Day in 2012, and there was no stroke policy in Nigeria. So I asked myself a question, you know, for that year, 2015, 2015 when I won the World Stroke Day Award, what is the theme? And the theme was, I am woman, stroke affects me, and stroke can affect everyone. And that really hit hard for me. It hit home for me. I felt that was important. And my strategy, I felt, was to work at three levels. One, at an individual or personal level, because stroke affects me. And, you know, my father-in-law had a stroke and died. My father's sister had a stroke and died. My mother's sister had a stroke. And I'm sure there are many Nigerians like myself who are wondering what they can do. So this is a good time to engage them. I also felt that there's a need to do something at community level to engage people that are willing and interested in advocating for stroke care across the community. And I felt that was really important. And finally, I felt that there's need to influence policy. Since we do not have stroke policy in Nigeria, the World Stroke Organization does not celebrate the World, uh, uh, I beg your pardon, the Federal Minister of Health does not um, celebrate the World Stroke Day and we don't have SSOs in Nigeria. So my advocacy journey was to form alliances. My first alliance, when I, after I heard Dr. Sheila spoke in Istanbul, I thought, that's what she did. She got doctors on board. I have to do that. So I started speaking with doctors. And I formed an alliance with the Medical Association of Nigerians across Great Britain. And they came back to Nigeria with me to meet with the Federal Ministry of Health. And that resulted in a stroke action, had, uh, having an, a memorandum of understanding with the Federal Minister of Health to achieve a lot of things. And the next thing was, how was I going to scale impact? So my next slide is take home message from my strategy to anyone that wants to win uh, the stroke, Award Stroke Day Award. So for example, like I said, forming an alliance, first of all, the theme of the World Stroke Day, if you look at the pictures on the left of my slide, I have to focus on that campaign theme. I am woman, stroke affects me. Not only myself, but other women in the com community. How can I engage them? How can I uh, get them committed? 
um, to work with stroke action to raise awareness of stroke and prevent stroke in Nigeria. So the first photograph you see there is an alliance between stroke action and the Medical Association of Ni uh, uh, Nigerians across Great Britain. Dr. Ako in the middle is the president of, the, of MANSAG and uh, the secretary with uh, the chairman of stroke action and myself, uh, Professor Sunday Bwala. So we had a meeting, we had an MOU, they rose funds in the UK to help us to come to Nigeria. They actually came to Nigeria with us to seek to meet with the Federal Minister of Health. We met with the minister and the result of that, the second photograph you see, which is a, a memorandum of understanding signed between Stroke Action Nigeria and the Federal Minister of Health to address key issues. One, to have a national power to stop stroke in Nigeria. So in 2015, when I won the award, was the first time we had a national World Stroke Day celebration in Nigeria in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Health. And since then, the Federal Ministry of Health has been making an impact on World Stroke Day. Also, we wanted to pilot um, um, Life After Stroke Center, and we felt to influence stroke care in Nigeria, we need to engage stakeholders from across all professional in interest groups doctors, nurses, therapists in Nigeria. So that led us to organize all the chairmen and, chief, and the, also the presidents of all the professional groups in Nigeria with the Federal Minister of Health. We formed the Nigerian Stroke Reference Group in 2015. Now the Nigerian Stroke Reference Group is um, a, a group that is now sitting in the NCD department in the Federal Ministry of Health and it helps the government and the Minister of Health to make policy decisions in stroke care in Nigeria. So that is an excellent milestone to achieve and that contributed to us winning the World Stroke Day Award. At the community level, we wanted to engage anyone that wanted to support us, to support stroke action. Doctors, nurses, stroke survivors, carers. So we developed uh, a training program called the Stroke Ambassadors Development Program. Just to begin, because there's, at the time, there was no stroke education or training package in Nigeria that is accredited. So this was the only one. We use this program to teach nurses and doctors and you know, um, other professionals and lay people uh, uh, about stroke, what it is, the symptoms, you know, awareness of stroke and how to advocate for stroke care. And we can see um, we now have up to 85 um, stroke ambassadors across different states in Nigeria who come together to advocate for stroke care and celebrate the World Stroke Day. And most importantly for us, one of the, we felt that we have to make an impact on an individual basis. We have a young lady who has a master's degree MBA. Her name is Grace. She had a stroke and she was made redundant um, from um, her, her work as a result. So she was unemployed. She was, you know, had post-stroke depression, etc. So stroke action engaged with her and we saw the potential in her to advocate for stroke care. You can see Onye at the first slide at the bottom speaking on World Stroke Day in 2015, for the first time coming out in public to speak about stroke awareness, stroke prevention. And that was really excellent on behalf of the World Stroke Organization. And the second photograph, a, uh, a group of um, uh, stroke ambassadors that celebrate the World Stroke Day, um, advocating for prevention, using the stroke riskometer in their areas um, within the community. Um, the, I would say that the Federal Ministry of Health, MOU, was a catalyst for a lot of things to, that started happening in Nigeria. On the last photo, uh, photograph on the right, you can see the uh, Stroke Assembly, which we celebrate on World Stroke Day every year between Stroke Action Nigeria and Federal Ministry of Health, and we engage several stakeholders. So, what is the outcome of all this? Where are we going with this? From a, um, the policy engagement, first of all, we have the Nigerian Stroke Reference Group sitting in the NCD Department of the Federal Minister of Health, and the Minister of Health taps into the Nigerian Stroke Reference Group every time that he wants to make a decision on stroke care. Secondly, you can see the first photograph on the top left is the Minister of Health. We now have the multi-sectorial action plan for non-communicable diseases in Nigeria. And Stroke Action is the representative on the multi-sectorial action plan technical working group and we made sure that stroke is listed within the MSTA um, at the uh, uh, advocacy uh, campaign prevention level. And a budget has been released for this now. 
um, identified as the basic healthcare provision fund to support people with stroke and other NCDs. So on the right, at the top right, you can see now that has moved on. We now have a, an NCD technical working group in the Federal Ministry of Health to monitor the implementation of the EMSA and also identify existing gaps and make recommendations to the government. And one of the gaps you're beginning to see is that there's no policy in guidelines in acute stroke management. And I am a member of the NCD technical working group. At a community level, you can see that the stroke ambassadors continue to do several activities to promote stroke awareness and prevention of World Stroke Day. We do this now across seven states. And this is one of the states. You can see Oge in front is a physiotherapist leading her team in Anambra State on World Stroke Day last year uh, to celebrate the World Stroke Day. And also in Abuja on the right, you can see the stroke ambassadors doing community awareness in collaboration with a, a big church in Maitama um, to, uh, to check for um, people that are at risk of stroke using the stroke risk and doing health check. And at an individual level, I mentioned Onye, who we encourage to speak on World Stroke Day. Today, Onye is now supported and enabled to become a stroke ambassador for Stroke Action Nigeria. She's the peer coach teaching her colleagues uh, how to have a functional rehabilitation and exercise after stroke, and she's based in Abuja. She's also now a stroke entrepreneur, and she's working part-time and then making a living. And last year, Onye was appointed as a national NCD advocate and champion for the Federal Ministry of Health. So you can see her photograph there with the uh, national coordinator for NCD in Nigeria, Dr. Ezinde. So what are we saying here? If we are going to plan to influence policy, to engage stakeholders and make alliances, we need to be focused on the World Stroke Day theme. So this year, we are focusing on prevention. We are asking people to join the movement um, to prevent strokes across their regions. And we are also saying that we are going to emphasize on physical activity, which is one of the risks uh, that we know that will, will help us to prevent strokes. So we're having the global dance chain. So if you want to win the award this year, follow this strategy, work with people, focus on the campaign, and go for it. Now, this is the statement I made when I won the World Stroke Day Award in 2015. I say that I feel very excited about the opportunities for stroke services development in Nigeria and the difference that this will make to the lives of survivors, their carers, and at-risk people in Nigeria. Have I done that? I have to thank the World Stroke Organization for recognizing our potential in 2015. As a result of winning this award, we are influencing policies in Nigeria. We are working with the Federal Ministry of Health and other stakeholders across the world. And most importantly, I think that we are influencing the stroke um, um, recovery journeys of a lot of stroke survivors. We have a Life After Stroke Center in Indonesia, the first and only one in Nigeria, and we also have a satellite center in Abuja, and we have stroke support across five states. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wonderful, Rita. Congratulations for your hard and very well done uh, job. Wonderful. Congratulations, really. I'm very happy to see and to know. Shara, you, okay. asked, you asked me to go for it, so we did. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> okay, let's now call uh, Professor Bindu Menon uh, to talk about reaching rural communities to raise awareness and improve management of stroke risk factors. Uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Bindu Menon is head of department and senior consultant neurologist Apollo Hospitals in Elor, India. She has over 70 publications in var various international and national journals. She is a research committee member of WSO. She founded uh, the Dr. Bindu Menon Foundation in 2013. She has been instrumental in starting a novel project for the first time in the country, Neurologist win, uh, on Wheels, a stroke help app for post-stroke. So let's see, Professor Bindu. Thank you very much, Shaila, for the kind introduction. I sincerely thank the World Stroke Organization uh, for having um, acknowledged our uh, work and also for giving us this opportunity to share our project today.
Uh, India has undergone an epidemiological transition from 1990 to 2016. And by that, what we mean is that initially at 1990, the major burden of the disease was um, the communicable diseases. And in 2016, almost all states in the country had made this epidemiological transition with IHD, COPD, and stroke heading the list. And with India having 18% of the world's population, this is something of a, um, a cause of concern. Indeed, there has also been an increase of more than 100% in the incidence of stroke in India from 1970s to the 2000s in the 20th century. Now, the Ministry of um, Health and Family Welfare tried to address this gap in the primary stroke prevention, and they found that the major cause of worries were the lack of awareness, the underusage of the population-wide strategies, the false reassurances of uh, low risk, the management of blood pressure, the lack of local stroke and the cerebrovascular disease prediction algorithm because it's different in our races, racial and ethnic groups, and the cost factor. And out of these, the ones which we could probably have addressed was the lack of awareness, the management of blood pressure, and the cost barrier. Keeping this in mind, we uh, started our first a project and that was a small step by founding the Dr. Bindumanan Foundation in 2013 with an objective of increasing the awareness and educating the public, the risk factor identification and helping them to prevent them and identifying the drug naive patients and trying to decrease the treatment gap by giving them uh, free medications. We started off in 2013 with only 20 patients under the foundation, and now we have more than 100 patients with stroke who are beneficiaries who get medications and treatment consultations every month since 2013. But there are certain other challenges which needs to be addressed, and this, that is the main is the rural urban disparity in acute stroke care. There is a skewed deviation of uh, super specialist doctors in especially the neurologists with hardly any specialist doctors available outside the cities and that is a serious bottleneck which is difficult to address and in fact the rural population in the country is reported to be around three fourths that is around 65 percent the urban population is still ready with the acute stroke ready hospitals but the rural population has still certain difficulties to reaching the even the hospitals and what could be done for them in fact it is very difficult we may never be able to treat every individual stroke patient in the country for a long time to come with thrombolysis so where should our emphasis be and as the emphasis for the world stroke organization as a theme this time also goes that preventing as many strokes as possible will probably be the best stroke care that we can provide and as we know that 80 percent of them are the consequence of modifiable risk factors keeping that in mind we made another further step and the barriers of overcoming this step is the distance because the rural community, which is interiors, we need to reach to them rather than they coming to us, which we were doing all this while from 2013. So we thought that we should reach out to the patient, people out there in the rural community. And for that, we made a bus and made it, uh, designed it into a clinic. And in fact, the dust bus all across has full of uh, posters which tells us about the stroke itself so wherever we go into the rural community and park the bus itself so all these posters itself would be a telltale sign to tell us about the prevention how they're recognizing the signs of the stroke we travel in this bus into the rural community and in that way we bridge the gap of the distance because we go there we bridge the gap of ignorance because we teach them and we bridge the treatment gap as well we follow the motto in the neurology and wheels is we reach, we teach, and we treat. Uh, the neurology on wheels is in Nellur, that is um, a, a district in the South uh, East Asia, uh, part of the country that is Andhra Pradesh, that is a coastal district of Andhra Pradesh. And the what we do is that first, from the 46 mandals in that Nellur district, we identify one village, which is a resource poor village, and also, which doesn't have medical equipment as, as, as compared to the other villages. Then we intimate the village serpent or the head about the date of the visit. We incorporate the auxiliary medical workers, that is the ASHA, Anganwadi, and the AM workers, which are, uh, we, we, have it, we have them in villages, and which, who take care of the um, medical needs of the population there. And then the stroke patients are registered. The time of the, the date of the uh, 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 Neurology on Wheels campus already intimated to them. 
when we follow the teach the next part is once we have reached the village we give an awareness program to the village people and then the last part of it is detection of hypertension diabetes and stroke in the reach program we have come we have uh, almost covered 29 villages in that 46 mandals and this is the pictorial diagram as we have reached around 150 kilometers from the area of so this is where we stand here where our office for the foundation is and these are the all the areas where we have reached reaching part is difficult because some of them are very far and where the roads and uh, the mode of car transport is also not very good and wherever we park the vehicle, there we start the uh, clinic itself because the clinic is inside the bus. Because most of the places wouldn't have a wouldn't have a place where we can probably start a clinic outside of the bus. When we reach the village, it is very it's it's surprising as well as I feel that it's a boon in disguise that we have the whole village almost turning up to see what's happening, and we take this opportunity to give a good awareness for 15 to 20 minutes. We talk to them about stroke, explaining about stroke, the risk factor, the symptoms, that time is brain and the post-stroke care. And at the same sitting, whatever we have discussed with them, we distribute pamphlets and we stick posters at several strategic areas in that particular village so that we feel that augmenting of information is very important. We have completed around 29 villages by now covering each village would have around 250 to 300 members who would be screened by us, apart from the uh, number of uh, people who would come forward to uh, listen to us about the awareness. And in fact, we have been able to educate more than 8,000 people. In the stroke campaign, we found that when we were talking about the fast, it was very difficult for us to connect to them because we this is a rural area and most of them do not understand English. So we made a new um, a stroke mnemonic, which is in the local language, that is Telugu, in the seven swaras of the music. And that is very easy for them, for them to recognize. And this is told to them and we feel that they're able to understand the stroke warning uh, symptoms faster. Uh, in, in our local language. After the awareness program, then the, uh, uh, we start the uh, treatment part of it and where the screening of smoking, alcohol, hypertension, diabetes, and uh, clinical recognition of stroke is done. There is a counseling again, which is done inside the bus, which is for the risk factors of uh, the modifiable risk factors. And then patients who have hypertension and diabetes are given treatment for one month and then they are asked to go to the primary nearest primary health centers for the further treatment. And if the patients are not able to go or probably the primary health center is not working there, then the patients are adopted into a foundation, which we have the monthly camps from 2013. In this way, we improve the delivery and coordination of the community services. Now, this is the 29 villages where we have educated more than 10,000 people and more than 8,000 patients, uh, people have been screened and we have detected almost 294 patients with hypertension, 74 of diabetes and drug name patients of stroke 111. And certain areas we found that certain villages had a, a majority of them and a huge number of hypertension prevalence was more. However, we do not know the reasons and we have not investigated further into it. As the foundation does many more activities apart from the regular monthly camps and the neurology and wheels program, that is the school awareness programs, distribution of posters into the various strategic areas, um, the stroke help app, which has been um, bought out for the physiotherapy rehabilitation for patients, especially in this COVID-19 era, uh, where the patients can download the app, which is free and they can do the exercises. We feel that mm, Neurology on Wheels has been the project which has reached the population uh, a, into the population. Hypertension, we found, was very common here and the level of awareness was very poor among the rural population. As the Ministry of Health had found that there is a false reassurance of low risk because the number of patients that we screen for hypertension, diabetes or stroke feel that they are well and that they, they do not need a medication and do not need a follow-up. The rural community change that we could do was in three ways. That is the primordial prevention because the patients, the people, the general public was educated and they were primed about the risk factors before they could get the risk factors. A primary prevention by detecting the major risk factors to prevent stroke. 
The secondary prevention, there were drug knife patients, as we saw in the list, there are more than hundreds of drug knife stroke patients who have been told to take the medications diverted to the community health centers or to the foundation for the regular uh, medications and checkup if need be. We wish to incorporate one more and we, in fact, we have done in two villages, we care. That is, we sent our person, our team, somebody from the team to the village and the patients who were detected to be stroke are again uh, are seen through the teleconference network to see whether they are having a, reg a regular compliance of medication. It's very heartening to know that the neurology on wheels is, is a warmly welcomed by the rural public, but sometimes when the crowd is too much, it, that sometimes becomes a cause of concern to us as well. And just to put in a nutshell, let me uh, give me an opportunity to show a small video clipping of what we do. Thank you very much for this, uh, giving me this opportunity. And I wish to thank everyone who has joined us in various points of my journey in this fight against stroke. And I thank the World Stroke Organization for recognizing our project and giving us this opportunity once again. Thank you very much. That's really amazing. Really, really, congratulations. I, I really love it. Well, <laughs> really love it. Congratulations for your wonderful job. So now let's uh, uh, call uh, Penina Rosenwaite from Neiman, Israel. Uh, <clears throat> Penina so yeah. is the CEO uh, of Neiman Stroke Survivor Organization in Israel for the last 16 years. Penina, is it you? Okay. All right. So I will tell you about what we have done in Israel. Oh, this is my dog, so I'm sorry. Uh, for many years, we understood that uh, the public uh, awareness of stroke in Israel are very low compared to the level of awareness achieving across the Europe. I'm also part of the board of uh, SAFE, which is a, a stroke alliance organization in Europe, and I knew the difference. Uh, what we, we wanted to change it, so what we have done, we. Uh, we started to emphasize on the policy uh, and the decision makers at the reduction of stroke incidents and uh, seeking for a uh, treatment for the people uh, will uh, reduce death, disability, and the economic burden of stroke on the Israeli budget. So uh, we make our uh, uh, comments that um, it's very needed to be to have a national campaign. Uh, in order to increase the public awareness to stroke symptoms and the need to rush to the hospital very urgent and by ambulance. Okay. Uh, so it took us many years to do, at least about 10 years. Then we uh, got uh, the idea and the message and we set a budget 
in the Neiman, our organization was chosen to lead the campaign with the professional production team of the Ministry of Health. We learned from many other uh, campaigns all over the world what uh, everyone had done in a fast uh, campaign. And we understood that the message should be very short, very accurate, uh, convey the uh, emergency, give a hope, and uh, motivate people to take action. Otherwise, it's just uh, knowledge. Uh, between 2016 and 2019, it's three years, uh, the Minister of Health conducted a very ex extensive uh, campaign. It's TV and social media uh, to raise uh, the symptoms of stroke. Uh, it's about uh, $600,000 per year. So for three years, it was a very major um, uh, so I would like to uh, show you the campaign. Let's see if it works. It will be wonderful. לאסוף את המצרכים, רצוי, מצרכים שתזמינו בשבילם אמבולנס, כל דקה קובעת, להקום, ראשה בגפיים, דיבור מבוקר. רק אחד מהסימנים מופיע, זה הזמן להתקשר ל-101. אוקיי, אז uh, she doesn't need a water, he doesn't need to, uh, that you complete the sentence, they need an ambulance. This was all the message. If you see someone with a symptom, doesn't need anything else, just take the ambulance. Uh, the campaign reached a million of people and we are about 9 million people in Israel, so I think everybody, everyone in Israel saw this uh, video. And it was, it became a cult, it was, uh, it was uh, a lot of talk about it, uh, uh, in many TV shows uh, national wide. Uh, the key indicator of our success in the, this uh, campaign was the uh, increasing numbers of stroke patients arriving to the hospital in time to reach, to uh, receive the RTPA uh, from 7.6% uh, in 2015, 15 to 11.2% in uh, 2019. So much more people are getting in time uh, to get the best treatment they could. Uh, what happened also that the campaign uh, placed Neyman, our organization, as a key player in the stroke arena in Israel because we got uh, exposure to the people uh, by have, being part of this uh, campaign. Another one. Uh, we continue this campaign also with ongoing follow-up uh, publication in social media. The TV campaign itself, which is very important for me to uh, emphasize, it was a, a part of a large campaign that included activities to influence the decision maker and the government in the health care system. And this uh, working also for a few years, uh, its result, um, um, a national uh, program to reduce the incidence of stroke uh, by having a national stroke registers, which we didn't have uh, before, a quality indicator for stroke treatment in the hospital, which is also was new, and doubling the number of interven interventional neuroradiology, I can't say the word, but people to make this uh, surgery for brain surgery. Is more. Uh, we are going for future direction. As everybody knows what is stroke now, and everybody knows the system, but this is a message that if you don't keep it on, you lose, a, you lose it because so many other things going on in the country. So we are going to continue this campaign, especially now when the attention of the, all the public and the government is absolutely on the COVID-19, and all other diseases and other patients are pushed aside. Uh, we are very afraid that uh, we will lose all uh, our achievement that we have done, we have gained after so many years of work. 
We also can see that even more than 40% of people with a stroke are avoiding coming to the hospital because COVID-19. They're afraid to get uh, uh, the COVID-19 also, and also the hospital is full with uh, the corona people, so it's a big issue. Uh, we also know that in this time, because of the social distance, people are much more at home and are very open to the media, even adults, people that never did it before. So it's a very good time to uh, bring the message uh, very easily and even cheaper. Okay, so we are going, uh, what we have done in the first uh, months of the COVID-19 uh, in Israel, that we call the public to come and uh, to a uh, web, uh, um, to join lecture on stroke prevention, maintaining, maintaining rehabilitation during the time that they didn't go out from the house and it was a big problem for many people and all the quality of life on social media. Uh, the number of participation, uh, participant was enormous, many, many people. We did it also in Hebrew and in Arabic, the people uh, speak Arab and there was a, a huge uh, success. So we are going to uh, continue with this. We are in a process to develop a series of video calls all about stroke. So people will get it in a, a, all the information they need about stroke prevention, rehabilitation, life after stroke, and also how to execute uh, the rights. The video will be shared through an innovative website that allow a chat code. People can get uh, the re receive, the customized and accurate information uh, because we know that so many people can lose themselves in so, so much information and they don't, don't always find the right information they need. So we are focused on this in this period of time because stroke patient lives matter, not only the corona patient, which is very sad, but we still have not to push aside the people after stroke. This is a, some picture about a, all kind of uh, presentation and uh, um, um, asking the people to come to join these lectures and uh, they came to see it. Uh, also, lots of uh, conference and materials that we use uh, to send the people. A few things that I think that it's our most important message from my experience. It's being prestigious per, per Sorry, there's distance, sorry for this word. Uh, if they uh, throw you out of the door, you have to come through the window. It took us many years, but uh, and we never gave up. And in the end of the day, after so many small campaign, we got the big one that make all the difference. I understand the patients have a lot of power. Uh, we can use it and we have to, uh, uh, take advantage of it by including their voice in our campaign. Every time that I go to the government and I go to a, the Israeli parliament, I, I come with a, a, the patient and they say they are the, ambas the great ambassador. We learn from other campaign, with other organization, how to do things. I learn a lot from the stock um, organizations in England and Ireland and after, learned from their experience and did it, uh, uh, you know, by the, uh, put it, uh, adapt it to my culture and uh, our reality, but it's work very good for us. It's very important to come with data to the, the uh, decision maker, uh, especially on, uh, the, on the burden of stroke, the cost of the not preventing stroke make also, it was a great influence to uh, policy makers to make action and to do things. And the, the last one is that the TV campaign is not a target. It's a one step to reduce the incident of stroke and to promote the rehabilitation. We have to, it must be part of an overall plan, a very important, but uh, just information, it's not enough. We have to make take action. Uh, this is people after stroke, it's a young uh, woman uh, that uh, 
got stock after the, having a second baby birth and the, uh, and she's a great ambassador for us, speak for the message. Uh, Chaim is a young one who got a, a stroke and he is making a, a physiotherapy a, in front of the computer all the time that he's at home can go out. And his wife giving a lecture to the physician in, the, in all the in hospital. She's bringing the message to the people um, that working with stroke survive. And this is the message. Thank you very much. That's it. Thank you, Penina. Thank you very much for your beautiful presentation. Now we have uh, some questions here. You can open your camera. Virginia, first is for you. So, um, can we understand why still the stroke patients are not getting treated in time in spite of this, er this uh, era uh, of uh, awareness happening in the modern internet era? Many patients are being affected, majority educated. Um, kindly suggest what best can be done to treat more patients in the window period? Do you think, Virginia, you can use the social media to improve the awareness or uh, some other advice? Uh, I think that uh, to improve the consultation in time window, you need a coordinated action. Of course, it's 100% uh, necess necessary to educate populations, uh, this type of campaign, but of course, you have to need uh, coordinate activities in pre-hospital and hospital uh, organization. So you need to do uh, all these things. You need to educate the population to have the awareness to recognize stroke and ask for help. You need a pre-hospital uh, organization, an emergency that can respond to the call of the population. And of course, you need, uh, you need a hospital. So. Uh, one step is all we are doing here, all the campaigns, uh, like the World Stroke Day campaign, but you must coordinate activities uh, in a governmental uh, state to uh, improve the number of patients that can uh, be treated uh, in window time. Perfect. Yeah, I agree that we need the governmental campaigns. We will try to push this this year, discussing with the Minister of Health uh, to, to improve awareness to the population. Rita, for you, uh, inspiring for Nigeria with a woman tagline, congrats. Uh, my question is how to maintain World Stroke Day program? It's just only a celebration of World Stroke Day every year without any scaling impact on and focus program afterwards because <coughs> too many issues related to stroke. So what do you think about the campaign only one day or we, we should do it in the whole year? Rita, for you. Okay, so I think um, the World Stroke campaign and the World Stroke Day is important. It provides a focus because we did a theme. And without that focus, I would not have achieved, or stroke action would not have achieved what we achieved in Nigeria. So my, the, our strategy was on three levels. One, policy level. Because we focused on the campaign, we collaborated with key stakeholders, doctors across all levels, uh, multidisciplinary team, all the um, health and social care organizations in Nigeria. And as a result of that, we have three things. One, the Nigerian Stroke Reference Group, an advisory body for the government. Two, we have the multi-sectorial action plan, the first health policy that contains stroke in the whole of Nigeria. And third, we now have a technical working group, which we are members, that will monitor implementation and advise and identify gaps. And the budget has been agreed for that. I think, you know, just focusing on the World Stroke Day and we achieve that at the policy level is really important. And now we are working with government to see whether we can have a stroke bill in Nigeria. Okay, so that will be the next step. All because of the World Stroke Day. The second one is at the individual level. How can we sustain this? We say that we started engaging with people that are interested and committed. We have stroke ambassadors, many of them in Nigeria. And our sustainability plan has been training them in different states. We have 37 states in Nigeria. And at the moment, we have presence in seven states. We stroke ambassadors, 
that advocate and campaign for world structure in their own states, in their own regions. And the next step for us is to replicate a life after stroke center so that they have a base and a focus for engaging with the government so they can replicate the type of policy influence that we have done at a national level in their own states. So we are training the stroke ambassadors as stroke entrepreneurs. In fact, as I speak, I know that two of them are here listening, Grace Achado from Benue State and Michael Luchuno from Lagos State. So the little campaign we've done, we have support groups in different states that are influencing government, making noise on World Stroke Day, having their stroke support group and Life After Stroke Center to support. So I like the theme, you know, they train, they reach out, they treat, and they care. So that is really, really important for us. Uh, so we should continue on World Stroke Day celebration and focusing on the theme, and that will achieve great impact. Thank you. W wonderful, perfect. Uh, Dr. Menon, uh, did you verify and justify the localized version of FAST acronym? Um, yeah, thank you for the question. Um, the FAST acronym, as we understand, is to reach the public in a faster and a better way. So where I do my neurology on wheels, the English language is not understood. So if I have verified that, we don't know because the day when we go, it's a huge crowd. We just work and work and work the whole day. Uh, it's just not possible to have a study to get it done. But have we, can we justify? And I suppose, yes, we can justify because at the end of the day, the mission is to reach the public in whatever way and whatever means, whether it is in this language, whether it is in fast language, the language they understand. The, uh, the, uh, the acronym which we have made is the Swaras of the Indian Classical Music, you know, and that's at, off and on, it would come in conversation. And I feel that um, if people do get to know about it, they may just think about it that, yes, that, that it was also related to stroke and one of the symptoms. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. I think the, the acronym should be adapted to the local language to better understanding. I agree. We, in Brazil, we do the same. We use the SAMU, that is our pre-hospital, to people understand and participate. Other question for you. Uh, do you charge patients in, at uh, any step uh, in your program or is totally free? It is totally free. We do not charge patients at any point. Wonderful. Um, the other question, um, can we make a push message awareness for people at large more than 5 billion are using mobile cell phone? So can you reach uh, the message to increase awareness among common people? Do you think it's possible? And of course we can as that so collaborate, but do you think it's possible uh, to use the cell phone to spread the message of our campaigns? Shaila, is that for me? Yeah, it's for you. <laughs> yeah, so it is definitely possible. But then I think this requires a collaboration with the government as well, because any push messages that has to go to such a number of people at large, we need to have permissions from them. And I think uh, the uh, stroke organizations in the country can uh, definitely coalesce with the government organization and have, have it done. I think that's a wonderful uh, sort of uh, uh, method and a good, good suggestion as well. Thank you so much. Yeah, and probably you can use a stroke hiscometer that you can send push. So it's pretty stroke hiscometer app and with hiscometer to aware about FAST and other um, important messages for the World Stroke Campaign. So now for Penina, uh, again about the translate, uh, translate or localize the FAST acronym, what do you think about it? To use other uh, acronym as uh, FAST, to aware about the stroke signs? No, 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 we translate it also uh, to Hebrew, of course, but only to the other uh, languages because we have people from uh, all uh, coming from Russia, come uh, the Arab speaker people, and so to all the main uh, languages in Hebrew, all the materials, also, also, also the website, everything that we do, we do it in all the languages. It's very important. Okay. 
uh, one more question uh, for you, Virginia. Besides catering to education and increasing awareness, there are feasible cases uh, which require intensive and expensive tools and diagnostic studies to find the cause uh, and uh, warrant the right mode of treatment. How do uh, use, uh, how about uh, referrals and facilitation uh, of such patients? And so, so patients that need more investigation and more, uh, more expensive tools and diagnosis studies. I will ask to everyone. Virginia first. Of course, again, here you have two things. One thing is education, awareness of the population, and the other thing is uh, programs. Uh, coordinate a government. <coughs> of course, you don't need to have all this. You have this. And it, it, uh, you can organize uh, your uh, system, your uh, health system, it's possible to derivate the patient with, um, uh, if uh, they need more uh, technology to another center. But of course you need both things. Perfect. Rita, what do you think in Nigeria if the patient needs more sophisticated uh, diagnosis methods or treatment? Well, like I said, uh, we now have the multi-sectoral action plan which is now linked to the national health insurance. So introduced to that is what's called the basic healthcare provision fund. And that is to be accessible for people with uh, NCDs, including strokes. So the only challenge there is that you, the organization has to be registered for national, to provide national health insurance for the clients to benefit. So that's the only challenge there. However, all the people in the formal sector have access to that because the national insurance contribution is through your salary. But now we are having community organizations and NGOs like Stoke Action preparing to register for the national health insurance. So through that, stroke survivors can access the basic healthcare provision form and have the treatment that they need. So that's a good thing. Again, a bonus for the World Stroke Day celebration. Wonderful. And uh, you, Bindu, what do you think about it when people need more investigation and technology? Um, uh, if I would take the example of my campaign, actually the first step is to ensure that they take the primary medications that is for the risk factors as well as uh, the uh, stopping the recurrence of a stroke. And then if they require, as I said, they are incorporated into the foundation and at, uh, at a different pace, we will want to investigate them. In India, in some uh, places, especially from the place where I am, Andhra Pradesh, the government has schemes to help the stroke patients. And uh, there are certain limited number of investigations which can be done uh, for the resource, uh, for the people who are below the poverty line. So we can uh, incorporate those patients under those schemes as well. Perfect. And Penina, what about in Israel? Yeah, well, we have a great uh, success now in uh, putting all our effort in prevention. As I said before, I'm very worried that we will go back because of the COVID-19. It's a big issue in Israel. This is the first thing. And the second, that I think that we need to emphasize that this is what I will play before the uh, Corona time is uh, focusing on rehabilitation and the life after stroke. It's not enough to save life. You have to give a good life and meaning life uh, to these people. And in rehabilitation, I think that we are still in a lot of problem, a lot of issue, not enough budget, uh, not enough uh, solution for the people. So uh, I think this is, should be a major uh, issue, all of us to talk about rehabilitation, talk about life after stroke, not just prevention. This is my main message. Okay, and one more uh, question to all of you uh, about one common cause of recurrence of a stroke is missing medications. Mm -hmm. How these challenges face in the campaign to all the speakers? So uh, people that know that should take uh, the antihypertensive pill, but they are not using. Virginia, what do you think about aware about the uh, medication and to uh, to use the treatment prescribed? Uh, of 
course, this is a big problem, and uh, education of uh, patients is uh, necessary. Uh, not uh, not only give the medication, uh, of course, education in 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 uh, maintain the medication, and we do all time in in our office in hospital, and of course, in the different campaign, we always uh, speak with patients about this point. Um, and uh, it's, it's very important in, in moment like now that every, uh, I, I think in, in, in all the world, the health system is thinking only in COVID and we have a big problem with, with uh, loss of, of uh, treatment of patients and it's very important to, to educate our patient that if you must continue your controls and must take the medication. Yes. Perfect. Rita? Rita? Yes, thank you. Um, one of the sustainability plans we have is community-based life after stroke center. And the one we have in Nigeria in our nature is multidisciplinary based. So we, um, we, we have seen a challenge in compliance, not only in compliance, but also in access to quality evidence-based medicine, because there's a lot of fake medicines about. So what we are doing now in the life after stroke center is that we are lobbying and engaging the government the state government, so that stroke action can be registered as an NGO medicine um, uh, provision organization for donated medicines. And we are now collaborating with uh, organizations in the USA and Europe. Once the registration is finished, we have developed a membership health plan, so in line with accessible healthcare, so that anyone that is a member of stroke action will have access to evidence-based quality medicine. So that is linked to membership. And, um, you know, uh, I know that, uh, uh, is it Prina said that, you know, campaign took a long time, but they got there. So we will get there. It's about engaging the government, identifying alliances and collaborators, and knowing exactly what needs. And the, the most important thing is that access is both equitable and affordable. And that's what we're trying to do. Wonderful. Bindu, what do you think about I feel that at an individual, this goes at an individual level as well, because each um, neurologist who is treating the patient at the uh, first instant itself must be making it very clear to the patient what are the what the patient would be facing if he stops these medications, and he should be very clear that these are the medications he should be taking. That would be at an individual level, and at a campaign level, as we as as has been suggested, that that goes a long way to um, get um, multidisciplinary people and uh, probably putting it across that um, it is it is a, a continuum of care for stroke that is very important. Yes, it's yes. not just prevention; it's not just getting a thrombolytic therapy, but the post-stroke care, which is very very important, is missing yes. in most places, and that's where our target should also be. And probably the future campaigns can also focus on post-stroke care. Wonderful, we will do it. Penina, what do you think about it? Well, I agree with all the others. I don't want to uh, say it again. Say whatever you say, Bindu, uh, Minon. Yes, everything, all the words, I absolutely agree with this. Uh, because we, there is a second stroke and a third stroke and uh, more, more things can happen in this journey to back to life. So okay, okay. Uh, well, thank you all for your inspirational talks. We will finish our session today, wonderful session. Remember to participate in one in four uh, campaign this year. One in, one in four is uh, don't be the one post stroke day because one in four adults will suffer a stroke, but staying active can help decrease your risk. That is why we are encouraging people to join the movement and be part of the world's biggest dance chain. Each participant will choose four moves. Then the next person in the chain will start their moves with the previous person last move. Every dancer can interpret the previous move, however, is easiest and most comfortable for their ability. So I will show an example to finish our presentation, how you can create your dance chain. Olá, galerinha! Hoje a gente vai fazer exercício e dançar. Sabia que o exercício é um, 
Um protetor com ABC. Vamos criar uma cadeira mundial de dança. O que importa é ficar ativo. This feeling inside my bones It goes electric, wavy when I turn it on All through my city, all through my home We're flying up, no ceiling when we in our zone I got that sunshine in my pocket Got that good soul in my feet I feel that hot blood in my body when it drops Ooh, I can't take my eyes off of it Moving so phenomenally So I hope you can join the fun, the movement and the World Stroke Day campaign this year and thank you to everybody for this wonderful session and see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank, bye. thank you very much.